Arts in Action. And I have with me a fantastic guest. His name is Rajiv Kalani. Is that right? Yes. And so, um, anyway, we're so excited to show you his artwork. He's got some very contemporary pieces, um, abstract pieces, very creative, and um, he's all got a lot of experience behind him. And um, he's going to share um, all these wonderful pieces with us. So, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. We are so happy to have you. And um, so, I have been looking at your art, and one thing I really love about contemporary pieces is they can pretty much go anywhere, mm -hmm. it just seems like. So um, can you tell us a little bit about the type of artwork you do and, and why you picked that? So <clears throat> let me tell you a little bit about my history, though. I started as a totally realistic artist. For, for three, four years, mm -hmm. I did that. Then I transitioned into semi-abstract works, and then I finally got into contemporary full abstracts. And that change actually happened when I actually moved to the U.S. about 12, 12 years ago mm -hmm. because I just felt the kind of work I was doing before was more suited to the market back home. And now in the U.S. I wanted to try something different, something... Now where's uh, home? Uh, home for me is uh, Pakistan. Pakistan, okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, so in 2000 when I moved down here, mm -hmm. that's when I decided to go a different route and try uh, more just pure abstract stuff. And uh, for me, I mean, I guess... Um, the fascination of abstract, or the beauty of abstract is, as far as I'm concerned, is you don't know what's going to come out of your final product because uh, you can place around, play with so many things, the colors, the forms, the design. It's not like making a landscape mm -hmm. or a still life where you know what you're doing and when it, where it will end. Um, so, the, so yeah, I kind of just picked up on that and I wanted to try and also keep my abstracts different from other people uh, or the other artists because um, I often hear people say, oh, abstract is just throwing colors. Uh, and I was going to say that. <laughs> uh, it's funny that you said that because I remember I'm one of those ignorant people. Okay. 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 I, and, and not now, but I was. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when I was younger, I used to, you know, my parents would take, go to museums every once in a while and we look at these pieces. I'm just like... It just looked like they just threw colors on there just, and just went. And as I got older and I was looking at the pieces and watching you know, how people paint and so forth, I realized, no, it's not quite that simple. And sometimes it could tend to be a little more complicated. Yes, there's always a method to the madness. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, it looks as if, I mean, I, I would say, yes, you do see artists, uh, you do see works that have predominantly one color or two color and just kind of it looks as if it's been splashed on it. Mm -hmm. But there's always a thought process, there's a mood reflected by in it. And, and of course you have to talk to an artist and get to know their history to really understand that piece. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I'm concerned, my works, I was just the other day telling somebody, um, yes, um, uh, as a matter of fact, an observation was made that my works have a lot of geometric forms and shapes in it. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, and I said that's a conscious effort, yes, I, don't want to be the artist that just flashes colors. I want my audience to see a little more in my work. So that's why I add in the design forms and geometric forms and shapes. So I just feel that gives a lot of lot more breadth and and more visual impact. Stimulation. Stimulation. And mm -hmm. everybody has a different interpretation. Somebody finds a donkey, somebody finds a goat, somebody finds a house, somebody finds a car. So and, and it's very fascinating. Well what were you that. painting? Was you, were they supposed to see a donkey, or were they supposed to see a car? Or were That's they a secret. Oh, okay. <laughs> the hardest secret. <laughs> I don't want to influence people's observation mm -hmm. of what I was thinking. So that's, that's the beauty of it all. And then many times uh, I just go painting with emotions and without any logical expectation of what my final piece should reflect. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they turned out quite fabulously, actually. So um, we're going to start with the one behind you that's hanging on the wall. Um, is there anything particular that influenced you on that particular piece? Um, yes. Um, and do you have a name for it? Is there a name for your paintings? That one does. It's called Rifts. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that has actually gone through, that canvas has gone through a lot of transformations. Oh, really? Um, yes. So you, did you treat the canvas first? I, I always treat the canvas. I put in a layer of gesso, white mm. paint, uh, thick. But the, the, the interesting part about that piece was that it was all colorful mm -hmm. and, and vibrant, which doesn't reflect right now. Uh, and um, I wasn't satisfied with that. 
And one of my challenges in the last few years has been able to paint something in predominantly white tones. Mm. Um, and so I thought that would be a good uh, try for me to go to the next level. And, in, and since the colored version of that canvas wasn't quite satisfying for me, mm -hmm. I decided to add uh, heavy tones of whites and layers. And once it was completed, it just reminded me of rifts that you see in rock formations, a different sets. And actually, levels. when you say that, yeah, it does yeah. actually. So, so that that's how that's why I landed up labeling it rifts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's a really appropriate name because now that you now that you said that, I can see the different um, textures of the rock rifts in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now the one next to it is a smaller painting. Um, I, I love that one as well. Um, is there an inspiration for that one or a name for that one? Um, I know not, not. I know not all artists name all their paintings, but mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I haven't really decided on a name for that one mm -hmm. as yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but the whole process, the idea was to create that particular piece. I, I kind of go through uh, color moods and color phases sometimes. So I was in one of my ochre yellow moods. I was going to say there's a lot of yellow in that one. So if anybody likes yellow, that's the one you want to. The one you want to get. Yes, and, uh, and so, so that's what I think I was in that phase mm -hmm. where I wanted to just do a predominantly, uh, I, don't, I, I don't remember whether I did the bigger one, white one first, and then I did the yellow one, but the idea was to kind of, I think was at that time period was to limit my color palette mm -hmm. and create pieces with, with predominantly one color mm -hmm. or, or limited colors, mm -hmm. so I think that's what that reflects. Mm -hmm. And that's really pretty. I just picture it um, being like on a burgundy wall because it would ma really make those colors pop out. Um, yes. So that was a, when, I, when we first put it up there, that was the first thing that popped up in my head when I saw that particular painting. Mm -hmm. So the one in the center, um, I love that one. It would be fantastic for a big wall or, or I'm thinking bank. You know, you just walk through the bank hallway or the foyer or something and and there it is sitting there. Um, so can you tell us about that particular painting? Yeah, I, I just hope that comes true. I hope <laughs> that banks have seen this. If you're a bank, if buy his painting. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, that one, yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of my favorites too. Mm -hmm. And it has an interesting uh, feel to it. Every time I look at it, it reminds me of San Francisco, mm -hmm. kind of land, cityscape, uh, maybe the financial district or the um, with the tall buildings. Yes, yeah, right, because you can see that. And then I, I found it really interesting because you can see some patterns in the yellow over here, um, some different textures yes. as well. Yes, that actually has a lot of treatment. I mean, it, well, I'm looking at the blue that kind of just stands out all of a sudden. Like everything's there, and then all of a sudden you have a splash of blue. It's it's a very good observation because not. When I finished this painting, I did not even have the. I, mean, it, it, I did not even think about that blue part of it. But this has been in quite a few. Um, this has been seen by quite a few of my friends and uh, relatives and so on. And it's ironically the first thing they notice is that little blue patch that, mm -hmm. that seeps out. And so you can imagine, or rather, I would say you can guess that this painting was initially blue. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it has many layers to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it started with tones of blues, I wasn't happy. Then I moved on to ochres and yellows, and I wasn't quite happy with that. Then I, I added uh, the brown tones, the raw sienna, amber tones, and then I added more yellow tones. Um, and somehow, to <coughs> excuse me, this also has um, one of my old works on paper mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if, you, I, if you can see on the right hand side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a piece uh, of uh, paper that's sticking to the canvas and that itself has quite a few designs in it mm -hmm. and adding that into the piece mm -hmm. has I think has added uh, a lot more uniqueness and interest to the whole thing mm -hmm. and, um, and I wish I could say this was a kind of a conscious effort and do you know, I think that's all part of creativity, um, really, that, you know, you go into something having one thing in mind, but then as you're doing it, you, you end up with another vision in mind and saying, you know what, I don't think that that's what I was really going for in this. And then, and, and you can also change midstream, too. My, my son is, um, he likes to draw a lot, but with drawing, 
it's not quite that simple. With painting, you can go over the paint and over the paint and change it and transform it to the way you want it to turn out. With drawings, it's not that. You typically have to take the paper, roll it up, throw it away, and start from scratch. So that's one of the things that I think is um, the best part about using paints is that you can do what you were talking about, it's changing it, you know, starting off with one thing, conforming it to something completely different because, you know, your vision could change while you're doing this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you. I yeah, and it's obvious because that's what happened with it, yeah. Yes, yes, so. and, and I think that, that, uh, that's the fun part of it all because you can change paintings mm -hmm. and uh, you have that flexibility, so mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Well, I'm assuming this is acrylic. This is all acrylic. This is all acrylic. Right, I just want to make sure yes. that. So now the one um, next to that one has, is predominantly red instead of yellow this time. Yes, and oops, sorry, I didn't want to cut you. No, you're fine, go ahead. Uh, that's that's the other that again goes with my uh, initial interest for doing uh, something along the rift line mm -hmm. um, and um, it started predominantly with red if I remember the history for that was that I wanted to do two opposite tones uh, if you see that one and this one mm -hmm. the idea was <clears throat> to have a dominant red with with patches a slash uh, cuts areas of ochre and yellows in it mm -hmm. and in this case the idea was to have predominantly yellows and it's uh, so it's more I wouldn't say yin yang but I just wanted to see how balance it here's they are yes, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. two, two things can be balanced out yeah and that would be two pictures that I would see going together when you're putting it up yeah. so um the one two uh, behind me it's predominantly white once again it goes to the the main color scheme of being like more of one color um, can you tell us about that piece? It kind of reminds me of, of wood. I, I can't. I can't explain it, but it reminds me of like driftwood or something. Yes, I. I, I guess because you can see the the grains and kind of the texture. Uh, in it. Sorry. Okay, your uh, your your last question was about driftwood. Right. So that's where we're gonna start from. We're okay. not picking up anything on your mic. Your mic all of a sudden. We're not. We're not. Yeah, we're not. It just stopped all of a sudden? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. We're not getting anything on, on you. So remember you saw your question. Yeah. So, so I said driftwood, and then you're going to say that's yeah, interesting yeah. because of the colors. Let's, let, me, let me check something. Okay. Okay. Uh, Good catch, CP and Sharon. Son of a gun. Uh-oh. No wonder. It's probably the wrong one. Go ahead, put your mic back on. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got it in your front. Oh. And that's why there's nothing in you picked up in here. But you caught everything else before that, right? How did that get plugged in? I hope we don't have to start over. I'm starting to get hungry. Okay, you'll, you'll flow. If you have to start over, you'll flow. Well. Yeah, but I'm hungry. <laughs> you'll be hearing my gr stomach growling on, on, on the microphone. Um, do you know what? I'm supposed to eat every two hours and I have to wait a few minutes. And so um, I didn't bring food with me this time. Because everything goes so smoothly every time we're here. Hello. Yeah. 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 One, two, three. Ten, countdown, so we Ten nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Get. Okay, good. <coughs> Is that okay? Uh -huh. Is that okay? Um, he's speaking. I already spoke. No, I, I already asked the question. So he's answering the question. Yeah, so that, that's actually an interesting observation. It is somehow reflects driftwood, I mean, because the grains and the textures that mm -hmm. you see in it, uh, that wasn't my intention. Uh, that it wasn't? It wasn't my intention, so no. What was your intention? My intention was actually to have a decent painting on that <laughs> canvas. Well, that's your intention for all of those. <laughs> no, that one is specifically, uh, the reason I say that is you can see strains on my forehead is because 
that canvas has given me a lot of difficulty. I can easily say I must have add, uh, done four different kinds of paintings, finished works on it. And wow. each, each time I wasn't happy with it. You kind of like go back and try and transform it into something? Yes, and, and in that too you can see their layers. So it, how much does that one weigh with all the paint on it? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, that wouldn't be a bad question for us to start with because it does weigh heavier than some of the other ones. Uh. But it, if you actually see that actually has a yellow that, I mean, it starts with the blue, it starts with the green, it starts with the yellow, mm -hmm. it starts with the knocker, and then finally it ends with, with the white. And, and even now, I don't know. I have no opinion for that one, except that every time I look at that piece, I remember the frustrating time I've had with that <laughs> particular canvas. And once in, once in a while, I also felt I should burn it so that I don't have to I worry about it. I actually like that one. Uh, thank you. Maybe. Yes. Are you going to give it to me then, since you're going to burn it anyway? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm like bribing the artist. So give what's me your, your next question? So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, so we're going to go to the ones on the easel. So we'll start with the one behind you. Uh-huh. Um, and um, that easel, it looks like there's, um, that one's really colorful. It looks like it's a lot of, it's a, a fun um, painting. Um, so you want to tell us about that piece? Yeah, that actually I created because, um, if I remember, I was, yeah, okay. That was, the idea was to do it for the holiday season mm -hmm. and for the Christmas time frame. That would explain frame. why it's so cheerful. Yes, and, and the Christmas, Christmas colors. I was told by, without naming names at this point, I was requested to do some pieces mm -hmm. uh, for a certain gallery uh, that ha reflected the holiday season to it. So, uh, so that's, that's the final product of that. So the, the yellows and the greens, and especially the greens and the reds that you see, mm -hmm. the inspiration is uh, that time frame. So which also tells you I did this piece mm -hmm. uh, late November, early December. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so yeah, and um, it definitely um, is, as far as color palette is concerned, it's definitely different from some of my other works. Well, you can definitely see the geometric uh, patterns that you were talking about in that one for sure, just because there's such a big contrast in colors between the, you know, the, the green and the yellow and the, and the white and the blue. So you can definitely really see the shapes behind that one mm -hmm. as well. Now there's one that's behind me on the easel and um, you know, I'm a kind of an earth tone kind of girl. I love things that are earth tones. That's probably why I like the painting that you, you're not that crazy about. Um, and so um, anyway, but this one shows a lot of like a, um, a rust color, like a brown rust color and so forth. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about that painting? For me, the idea for that particular piece was to finish it with uh, big brush strokes or with big, large palette knife mm -hmm. strokes because if you see, it has predominantly big areas of one color mm -hmm. as against uh, layers and in layers upon layers reflecting uh, other, other colors from behind on top of the other. So that was more again uh, my experimentation to try and I think that time I, I had also discovered um, transparent acrylics mm -hmm. that have a little bit of gloss in it. So that if you throw light on that piece it kind of shines a little more mm -hmm. than some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I look at it, all of them shine actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, lighting, it's the, the yeah. lighting. So the, they just don't shine as much, much as that, that one behind one. me. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, exactly. All your paintings shine. Come oh, on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good to know that. <laughs> good to know that. Even the whites shine. So yeah, that's good. it looks great. Yeah. Um, now we have like some of these pieces that you have here. Now these are fun. These have these little cute, um, you can hang these up and um, these little blocks. These yeah. are fun. And so you have this one here. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your inspiration behind these? Okay. I, I would just like to quiz you and kind of see what do you think my inspiration for these ones would be? Um, to me, I, like, you know, when I see these, I see, like, I see trees and, um, and uh, water. So kind of like an ocean type of a thing with trees mm -hmm. nearby. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of Berkeley a little bit. Oh, good, good to know that, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. My inspiration, I, I guess... Um, and wrong, Arlene, that's not your inspiration. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, my inspiration, though, was... No, I mean, everybody when I think has, When I see blue, I think water. Good, good. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't know. It's so... It's, if, if I say I was inspired to do these pieces based on the colors of the rainbow, and I don't know how I justify that, I really don't know how I justify that. Hey, but, you don't have to explain to uh, us. Yeah. It's, it's your artwork. It's I'm, your inspiration. Uh, that was sometimes I do do 
go into the realm of crazy artist, uh -huh. where I cannot explain why I did that. Crazy but, artist for hire, guys, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, for me also, I mean, uh, it, it, this one is hard to explain. I think my m main focus for this one was the design elements that mm -hmm. I put in there. Well, I love the for, little details, details that you add. Mm -hmm. I really do. So I really like the, the little tree work here because it just kind of reminds me of a tree. tree. Okay. But it's very interesting in the pattern. I like the pattern a lot. And then you have some of the... Um, indentions over here um, for the lines. Yeah. Um, so you have different shapes everywhere um, mm -hmm. in that as well. And I like the colors. The colors really make them stand out. Um, so I love the contrast between the colors. Um, this one here too, this kind of reminds me of, uh, of the good old USA. Oh, uh, oh yeah, red, white, and blue, uh -huh. of course. Uh, uh, again, I Ar think Arlene's intention. wrong again. No, no, no. Arlene is <laughs> right again. Um, I don't think Never anybody's wrong. ever wrong with any of the abstracts. That's for sure. But I uh, see how they see how they want to see it, like you said earlier. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, this was. You can say again. I had no intentions of doing red, white, and blue with the intention of representing mm -hmm. um, our colors. But my again, this was more an exploration of the time frame where I was using white to mm -hmm. do pieces. So I think also was because I wanted to do larger pieces mm -hmm. and then I wanted to also try some small mm -hmm. works and mm -hmm. so I think uh, I, this was one of those smaller works that I... Um, that you wanted to do. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question here because I'm, I really want to know. Sure. So you guys won't be able to see this on camera but if you go to a gallery and you look at what he has you'll be able to see it then so my question is is i see these like little patterns these little indentations and they're really they're swirly and really pretty mm -hmm. what do you use to make those different patterns like that okay that's a great observation and first i'd like to answer why because you almost I... can't see it unless you see it at a certain angle yes that is true, and, and most of my works would have that. Right, and I have uh, seen, I've, you know, and that's some of the things I've noticed, like I've seen it in the bigger painting and stuff, but that's, you know. One of the other mm -hmm. ones. Uh, yeah, and that's one of the frustrating parts, because like you said, till you don't see my works in person, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, websites and all just sometimes just don't do miss justice. Miss the details. Miss mm -hmm. the details. And mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's, I'll answer your question as to what I use first, is I use different kind of... Uh, Design patterns and element uh, and doilies and all. That's that, that what. Yeah, get. yeah, great idea. Uh, How creative. But I have to, I have to, I have to use it in such a way that it doesn't get too commercial. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like to keep them in the background. And mm -hmm. so that's why when you look at them closely, you notice all those details mm -hmm. without them standing out. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I do that also is because I want my abstracts to stand out or be different from my contemporaries' abstracts. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my explanation of uh, when somebody asks me the question, why is your abstract, what's so special or what's different about your abstract? And that I say that is the biggest difference uh, that I notice. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say I've seen other artists use it as well. But I am talking about in terms of my counterparts, my friends uh, that do abstract, or how mm -hmm. to differentiate my works from them, mm -hmm. and that's that's what I. So have it's kind of like your found. signature. That's my signature for sure. Mm -hmm. And you'll also notice in a lot of my other works is uh, these uh, swirly patterns. Swirls, I notice yeah. those. Mm -hmm. That's. I mean, I am also inspired by the by the um, designs and patterns that are part of our art and architecture in South mm -hmm. Asia. Mm -hmm. So if you actually, let's say, see uh, the Taj Mahal, and if you see the design elements in there on the rooftops, uh, they are, uh, a lot of them have this, these kind of patterns in there. Mm -hmm. And even the women that wear the traditional design. Oh, the they have the most yeah. amazing clothes. clothes. They have, oh, I just could go on and on, on. about the clothing for the women there. I'm just. Yeah. And then they can be expensive, especially the wedding stuff. Oh, yeah, wow. the wedding stuff. So now expensive. we have a couple of pieces over here. Yes. Um, can Can you bring the other one up as well? I sh sure. I call that Snow White, mm -hmm. uh, and I call this the Rusty Red. Mm -hmm. And these were kind of done in the same time period, but the trying to bind these together mm -hmm. by putting using white as the main color. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I wanted to show the contrast between the red and the green. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so this is my uh, 
um, and once again, I noticed your I noticed your signature swirls. Yes. And the different patterns in there. Mm, yes. Which some of you may be able to see the, see the swirls, but you won't be able to see any indentations it's, from the camera. I agree. So now people want to see your works. Is there, are you being shown in a particular gallery at the moment, or how would they get a hold of you if they want to purchase some of these, or maybe have you design something specifically for them? I not at this point in the galleries, but mm -hmm. I have my website and. Uh, no, but you have been in galleries, though. I have exhibited in galleries, mm -hmm. but I'm still not represented by a gallery. Oh, as got well. it. Mm -hmm. I was represented by galleries back home, mm -hmm. but here I am working towards getting representation. Mm -hmm. But I have done group shows in galleries mm -hmm. and invitational shows and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, so yeah, so but as far as uh, getting hold of me is concerned, I have my website. Okay, can Which you tell is, what, the, what the, that is? Yes, mm -hmm. that is my full name, mm -hmm. Rajiv Kilani Art mm -hmm. dot com. Okay. And, um, and you'll be able to see that um, in the end credits, so just so you know. Sure. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can email me, which is again my. Last name, first name at hotmail.com. This is Kilani Rajiv at hotmail.com. Mm -hmm. and, and through phones. And mm -hmm. I will be uh, starting May. I have my open studios coming up, and mm -hmm. the information for that is on the websites as well. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in Palo Alto and Los Altos. And I'm also a part of a group called Abstract 7. Okay. And, uh, now, where are they based out of? They are all, we are all part down South Bay area. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So the six, six other artists are down there. Of course, one of, the, one of us newest, newest members is from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. But um, the aim for the group is to find opportunities and places to exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, some galleries and well, some... Well, here you go. You got arts in action. There's yes. an opportunity for them. Exactly. So, <clears throat> now, we were talking earlier before we came on that you actually... Um, uh, have your some of your artwork on mugs? I do. How cool is that? Uh, so now, do you have it in other stuff too, like calendars? And, and have you done all that? Can you tell us like what type of stuff they can get from you besides just um, canvas? Canvas. Mm -hmm. I do have. Uh, uh, yes, I do have few mugs, but I do have bazillion T-shirts because I triple ordered by mistake one time so but mm -hmm. but that's a fun thing that I have all sizes and all um, two different patterns so mm -hmm. t-shirts as well and I have um, notebooks and pens that have that I have my works on them too oh, and, how fun! yeah so mm -hmm. that, that was my experimentation to see how it would look and because mm -hmm. I got the feedback that since my work is bold and striking mm -hmm. it would look nice so mm -hmm. so yeah I have that as well um, other than that, I also have, um, I mean, I, sh I can quickly show, I mean, I just don't... We, have a couple, we just have a couple minutes if okay. you want to show us what you... I just wanted to show, I mean, I just don't do canvas stuff too, but I also do, uh, um, like, uh, works on paper. Let's hold it straight uh, up so the uh, yeah. light doesn't glare on it. Okay. So this is watercolors. This is watercolors. I, I was a watercolorist mm -hmm. for the longest time, then I transitioned to mixed media, and this is like a combination of watercolors and... This is acrylics. fantastic. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Um, yeah. So watercolors are hard. They're very, very... It's very easy to, to end up all over the place, I think. And, yeah. You know, you can't be quite... Confined, so I have to say yes and no because <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm not an artist, so that's just uh, my observation. Okay. <laughs> my son's an artist. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us um, once again. This is the magnificent Rajiv, and so um, make sure that you check us out on channel 99 for AT and T Uverse, and for Comcast, it's channel 27, or you can go to www.vcat.tv vcat.tv and then you can also um, check us out it's every Saturday actually so Saturdays at 5 and Sundays at 2 o'clock so we look forward to seeing you guys again on next month's show and we thank you for joining us so thanks for coming on thank you thank you for inviting me and, and yeah, it's, it's, I it's, hope it's amazing uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate it I, yeah. I hope people get the opportunity to visit my website